Hello, this is Roy with the Love Chat, and today's topic is Ego is the Enemy. Now, this is episode number 204. If you have a question you'd like for me to consider featuring on the Love Chat, just write it in a comment below, and if you enjoy my videos, I'd be so very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. If you'd like email or phone coaching on your situation, just visit my website, thelovechat.net slash coaching. Now then, let's talk about ego and how it can harm you in a relationship or dating situation. But before I do, congratulations, we hit 30,000 subscribers. Thank you all very, very much for supporting my channel and allowing me to do what I do and help all of you every day. Thank you so much. Thank you for growing with me. And here's to 30,000 more. So I guess we'll start off by really defining what ego is. And it's a complicated definition. And I looked up a couple of different definitions and none of them quite fit the bill. So I'll go with Google's definition and then we'll work from there. Ego is, according to Google, a person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. But I think it goes beyond that, right? I think ego is the conscious version of us as we see ourselves, right? Maybe you could even say that ego is the part of ourselves, of our conscious mind, that we have control over, just like we don't have control over our subconscious, but we do have control over our consciousness, our thoughts, our actions. And so perhaps that's the best way to think of ego. The problem is how often ego can involve itself in relationships where it doesn't belong, or maybe even dating situations where it actually works against you. So a common example that I can give you are situations where you've just broken up with your partner and you see that they're in a rebound relationship or perhaps they're out partying or something like that and you find out that they most likely have been having sex with other people and you just cannot handle that. In fact, it doesn't mean that they don't love you. It doesn't mean that the relationship couldn't reconcile at some point. It's just the fact that something that you saw as yours something that you saw that you had ownership over is now tainted by somebody else. And for some reason, that messes with your ego, that messes with your sense of self. Another common example that we see is when there's been a breakup and you turn into yourself and say, well, what's wrong with me? Self-doubt. I must not be good enough. I must not be attractive enough. Well, then nobody's going to want me, right? Because this one person didn't want me. And I had this person for a point of years, and that was the only person that's going to love me. And you go through just all these self-hating exercises, and what does that mean? Ultimately, it means your ego is bruised. Perhaps there are other situations where you think to yourself, they broke up with me? But I was too good for them. They were out of my league, weren't they? And that's ego talking to you. It's ego screwing with you and pride. And these things will whittle you down slowly. My friends, ego is not your amigo. And the problem is that the main objective of ego, especially in the pursuit of happiness, is this. Once everything falls into place, I'll be happy. But really, we need to be thinking of it the other way, which is, hey, be grateful for what you are and what you have and who you could be, and you know that you're working towards that, and everything will fall into place. I guess what I'm saying is that because of ego, we don't let things just happen and be as they are. The way I think of emotions, especially during a breakup or maybe just dating, uncertainty, or anxiety, is that we always try to manipulate and control these emotions and make them go away. But what if we just allowed them to flow through us, right? What if we were a highway and our emotions and feelings and fears were just like cars and the car will drive on the highway and pass through and then sometimes the car will travel on the same highway again, but rather than trying to stop the car, we let it hit us and move through us and then be done with it. In other words, you acknowledge how you're feeling and you let the feeling fade. And in the meantime, you're focusing on the things that you need to do to create a better life. But what I do know is that if you have this ego saying, well, either this person broke up with me so I'm horrible and my image of myself is temporarily destroyed, or I don't want to think differently of this person, and they hurt me, and so now I view them differently, and their public image, my version of who I thought they were, is destroyed, and now so I don't think that I can trust myself, because they just betrayed me, causing all of this internal conflict. After a breakup, one of the strongest reasons to make somebody feel bad is their ego, because 
now they don't trust themselves and now they don't think they're worth anything. The main issue when we boil it down is that you tied your self-worth to your partner, meaning you need your partner in order to have self-worth. The whole objective here on my channel is to gain your own self-worth by things that you can control, like self-improvement, like going to the gym and the counselor and blah, 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 everything you're used to hearing. But when you tie it to something you don't control, and that thing eventually disappears, well, it's akin to your self-worth disappearing. So what's the solution? Maintain your own life. Maintain your own happiness, your own self-worth. Don't put it on something that you can't control. Don't put it on something that you do not know for sure will preserve your security. Only you can be secure in yourself. So I want you to listen to this video and think if what I've said matches your situation. Did you perhaps tie a good deal of your ego, of your self-worth, to another person? And if so, what are some ways that you can realize that in the future? Get innovative. You know yourself better than anybody on earth. And now is a time of self-exploration. And hey, it could even be fun. That's all I have for today. If you found my video helpful, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Please leave a comment below and tell me what topics you want me to cover in the future. Additionally, if you'd like extra videos every week, private live streams with yours truly, and free copies of my best-selling book on Amazon, just visit my Patreon, patreon.com slash thelovechat. Until next time.